This video is sponsored by Squarespace. How's it going guys? Vincent here from thecreativedojo.net. Welcome to another video tutorial. Today we have a very exciting one today. We're gonna to be creating kind of like this iOS series style waveform. Um, it's a lot different from your typical audio spectrum waveforms that you see on YouTube for visualizers. Um, you've probably seen this in Mac OS and stuff like that. It's pretty cool, it's very different. It's very solid instead of the waves and dots and lines and whatnot. Uh, so it's pretty cool. Um, and this is pretty much what it looks like here. Yep, so something like that. Um, you have this nice blending of colors, additives, and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot going on. It reacts to your audio, and this template file will be available for download. It's probably gonna be even rigged up with even more controls than it is now for download, so you can download it and use it in your um, video projects and whatnot, kind of just tinker around with this stuff. This stuff is fully rigged out here, so there's a lot going on, um, and so let's go ahead and get started here. So I'm hopping to a composition here. I have my audio imported here, nothing crazy. And we have a background layer, which pretty much has a four color gradient. I just picked these four kind of bluish hues to kind of get um, a non-black background here. And so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we won't be using any plugins to create the audio waveforms here. So that's always nice here. Um, we'll create a new solid. We'll call it uh, waveform blue. And we'll make it comp size. I'm working in uh, 1080p right now. And uh, let's go ahead and apply an effect and we'll go to generate and we'll apply a audio spectrum. And this is gonna do the bulk of the work for us. So this is what you, get, you guys are used to seeing right here. Um, under the audio layer, let's go ahead and select our audio layer that you've imported. And this is your typical way from you see a lot of YouTubers use. Um, you've probably seen stuff like this, and it's like falling down, it's like glowing and particles are kind of being released everywhere. This is pretty common. Um, so let's go ahead and try to mix it up here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to temporarily just kind of set the uh, the color to something that we can see easier here. And um, we're going to go ahead and increase the frequency bands up into like the thousands or so until you start seeing kind of like a solid kind of waveform here. And the great part is if you crank it up a little bit too high, it doesn't necessarily seem to slow down as much. Um, so you know, maybe like 2000 to where it's somewhat solid here. And um, so the whole the whole key to this thing is to, to provide the audio spectrum with a very low frequency range. Um, and by low, I don't mean the low frequency, but I mean the, the difference between the start and end frequency here. So. The default settings is from uh, 20 to 2000, and this is a wide frequency, and so it's gonna cover a lot of the spectrum of the audio track. What I wanna do is I want to crank the end frequency down for this one. So we're just isolating the low, the low bases right now. So I'm gonna start at 20, and I'm gonna go to like 400, and that's going to just isolate kind of the base right here. So as you can see, it's less detailed, and it's really just focusing on the bass. And for every track, it's a little bit different. You might need to adjust these values differently depending on your track because every track has different frequencies that are common for the bass, you know, the, the mids, the high. So basically you want to adjust the star frequency and the end frequency um, and kind of divide your track into threes. So in this case, I know that this track looks pretty good at from 20 to 400 or so. And uh, I'm just gonna scrub through the whole track here and just make sure that the audio spectrum doesn't go too crazy here. And so looking pretty good here, but I'm going to go ahead and crank up the maximum height a little bit. And just kind of scrub through to make sure that it doesn't just like go crazy and peak and whatnot. Yeah, so something like this, maybe, maybe 800. And everything, I mean, you can tweak everything else like the thickness to kind of fill it in. So just crank up the thickness to like five, um, softness down to zero. I kind of want it nice and sharp. Just like that. And that is perfect here. And so this is kind of a weird thing here. So for some reason, it doesn't seem like I can, I can change the colors to black. But if you get just close to black, you can actually 
kind of get close here. So I'm going to change the inside and outside color to an almost black. This is pretty much as black as you can get without being black. Um, if you guys know the reason why I can't change it to absolute black, let me know in the comments down below. But it shouldn't change anything really here. And so now that we have this waveform, um, I'm going to go ahead and apply the magic effects. So I'm going to go to layer styles and apply an inner glow. And this is going to be what we're going to be using to colorize this thing. And it does make the process a little bit slower, but um, I think it's well worth it. So for the color, I'm going to select that nice, uh, like Siri looking blue. And I'm going to increase the size here. And the reason why I'm doing this is because if you kind of look at the original um, Siri waveform, uh, the bulk of the color is kind of on the rim of the waveform. And as it gets um, closer in towards the middle, it kind of um, gradients towards a darker shade. And this is just kind of a quick and easy way of doing that. It doesn't look very nice. As you can see, you get this weird shape. It doesn't really, you can be more precise by choosing um, precise but it kind of looks even weirder at this point. So I kind of just stick with the softer and just be careful. Just don't, you don't want to make the gradient too obvious. And of course you can increase and decrease the range to kind of um, tweak that a little bit and you can clamp the choke and stuff like that. But you know, play around with these settings here, but basically this is, this is kind of what I'm trying to do. And I want to make it pretty hot and intense in color because I'm going to, decrease the opacity anyways. Something like that, and increase the opacity to 100% in this particular case. And so you get something like that here, and this is the first part of our audio spectrum here. And you know, in a perfect world, we'd rig all these controls up, and then, because we're gonna be duplicating this three times, um, we could rig it up into control null to make it a little bit easier to control. Um, but I'm gonna leave it at that. And then I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that. And we'll call this red. And by the way, I duplicated this by hitting Control or Command D. So here we're gonna go into the layer styles, inner glow, and we'll change this to like a nice hot red or so. Something like that. So as you notice that the spectrums are over overlapping each other because they're set to the same frequency in the audio spectrum. So select your waveform red layer. And so remember the blue was 20 to 400. Now we're gonna change this to something else like 400 to, I don't know, like 600. I usually like to kind of keep 200, 300, 400 uh, increments in the range. Um, so it's a little bit different. So we're covering all of our range here. And again, you would need to adjust these frequencies. Um, depending on your track here. And sometimes you may need to increase the height. Ideally, you want the maximum height to be kind of the same, but in some spectrums, um, in some frequency ranges, it might not be as intense. And so you might not see the color. So in this case, I'm just kind of scrubbing through to kind of see what's going on here. And you know, it's not going too crazy. I might even increase the height even more just so that we can kind of see it. Something like that. And as you can see, the blending mode look kind of whack right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the waveform layer blending mode from normal to add. And if you don't see this, you can go ahead and just right click, go to columns, make sure you see modes checked. But change the blending mode to add. And then you're gonna go into the layer styles of the inner glow and change the, uh, let's see here, the blending mode from screen to either in any of these linear dodge or color dodge. I see that linear dodge kind of looks what I'm going for. Kind of, it kind of creates that white, um, you know, blending that you see. And I'll probably do the same for the blue waveform here. Change it to either linear dodge or color dodge, just depending on what you like. So I'm gonna go with linear dodge. So now we're starting to see the audio spectrum here. And we're kind of seeing what we kind of like here. And um, I might decrease the size of the inner glow for the red. So you don't want it like this to where it looks kind of disgusting. You kind of want it just very, 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 very subtle here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this waveform again, and we'll call this waveform green. Hit U, U on the keyboard to show everything. And I'm gonna change this to like a, a green color. 
And again, we have to offset the frequency here. So go to the waveform green and change the frequency. Let's just say um, 600 to you know 750. Now, in a real world, you would listen to the audio track and adjust these frequencies. Or if you want to be precise, you can actually use a you know a visualizer tool like um, sound keys from Trap Code or you know something like that to kind of visualize what frequency you want to isolate. But just like that, you can kind of see what we're going after here. We we kind of have that nice um, that nice color. And I'm gonna go back here and increase the size for the blue because I don't like that nasty gradient here. Um, something like that. And if you want to fill, um, you know, the whole width of your, you know, your your screen, your composition size, you would just change the end point or in start point to zero and like 1920 by 1080 and do this for the rest of the layers here. To get something like that, um, it's also important to note that I am working in 16 bits per channel. You can also work in 32 bits. Um, and the reason why I'm doing that is because I am going to add a glow to everything. So I'm going to go to layer, new adjustment layer. And so if you, you know, play through this whole thing, you can see that it's reacting to our audio and it's working and it's, it looks great. And with a little bit of tweaking, you can get this looking great, um, especially with the color. Um, so just play around with the color, play around with, um, you know, what you think looks kind of looks best. And um, you should get some pretty decent, good looking results here. Now in the original demonstration, this demonstration here, um, I'm using a third party plugin from Plugin Everything, which is my favorite Glow plugin called Deep Glow. It's pretty affordable for what it is. Um, and the reason why I like it is because the glows look a lot more realistic, it looks a lot more hot. It works really, really well in higher bits per channels. And there's a lot more options. Uh, without having to finick around. I did a review over um, this plugin on my YouTube channel as well as my website. So just check it out if you're kind of interested um, in it. But basically it just kind of gives you a more hot look. And we'll just call this Glow. Um, and of course you can use any Glow plugin you want. You can use the default Glow in After Effects. You don't need to use any third party plugins or anything. Um, but yeah, just play around with it. Um, so, so like I said before, the main the main issue here is the size of the layer style of the inner glow. You don't want to make it again too too intense. Like the red, you can kind of see that that gradient a little bit too too much here. Um, of course, if you have any other suggestions, you know, feel free to let me know. But this is kind of how you create that um, you know audio waveform spectrum here. Um, and if you're kind of interested in how I made the kind of original here, um, basically this is pretty smart. Um, this current time indicator for uh, the current time of the track is actually an expression, a modified expression from Dan Eberts, um, which you can tinker around here. And um, this current time indicator thing here is actually rigged with linear wipe and with the base expression, the linear expression, which is very, 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 very powerful, basically. Um, this is not a tutorial over the expressions, but basically it takes the current time. It takes in um, the min and max value of the times. So from zero to the time comp duration, it will animate from this property from 100 to 0% for the transition complete. And so it kind of just interprets all that by itself. So if I change the comp duration here from 10 seconds, let's just say to 20, um, you should see that the whole um, time indicator bar will adjust frequently. So at the very end of the composition, um, it should be at the very end if I extend these layers. And as you saw, the um, the end time also changed because that's also real with an expression. Um, so that way it's a little bit easier to kind of just throw in your track here and start going with it. Just change the comp duration, extend the layers and it should work here. Um, some minor color correction for some contrast and then finally a grain layer because once you start adding a lot of glows and a lot of gradients, you start to see a lot of banding and artifacting. So I, I kind of add just a, glow, a grain layer to kind of break it up. One last thing I did in the original was I um, decreased the opacity of all these here. here. So I'm gonna hit T on the keyboard to show the opacity for the actual layer. Not the layer style, but the actual layer. It changed the opacity from 100% to like 70, just to kind of get a less intense uh, glow right here. 
and kind of had that nice transparent look, but you still get that nice audio waveform, uh, the white, you know, intersection parts right here, just to kind of give it that nice subtle look. I also think in the original Siri, um, things kind of move in like a wave fashion. So in this case, things are kind of just moving up and down, up and down, up and down in their frequency ranges, right? But in, I think in the original Siri, I'm not sure if I'm right about this, but it seems as if, you know, a waveform triggers and then it travels to the right and it kind of just dies down. So things kind of, you know, occur and peak here and it travels along a wave down. And with the audio spectrum, it's not possible to do that. Um, you can do something with like that with trap code form and delay. Uh, stuff like that and it kind of wave and displays to the right kind of fade away like a like a natural ripple wave um so if you want to do it that way you can do that with trap code form um and kind of blur it out and then clamp the alpha to kind of get this nice solid waveform um you can try it that way but um this is kind of the one limitation of this method is that you know you don't get that nice traveling wave it kind of just they're kind of like standing waves and they just kind of bounce up and down before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only one platform to make an amazing website, whether it's for a store, online business, or portfolio. They have tons of beautifully crafted design themes to choose from, fully customizable to make it the way you want it to look like, without any coding knowledge required. They have amazing 24-hour support, and best of all, you can use promo code DOJO at checkout to save 10% off your order and support the dojo. So check it out over at squarespace.com slash dojo. Squarespace, the number one place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys. This is pretty much how you create that kind of Siri iOS style waveform um, for your video visualizers and stuff like that on YouTube and stuff. So again, this template file will be available for download in the description down below. So check it out over at creativedojo.net. Again, if, if any suggestions or improvements or you know you wanna showcase your own work or your own version of this, um, let me know, leave a comment down below. But again, until next time guys, my name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo. If you like these videos, subscribe for more content and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.